Good day to all of my qualifiers, my friends, my family. Dr. George Fabre here, AKA Dr. G. Listen, season two, Qualified TV, the podcast is back. We're gonna finish this year strong. Listen, I can't explain or express how elated I am to be back with you all. And I appreciate all of your support. Those of you who's got, gone to drgeorgefabbury.com, made purchases of, of our merchandise, our book. We can't express how excited and how grateful we are of you all. We're going to discuss a topic that is very close to home that we've been dealing with. And as you all know, it's no secret what has happened in Texas um, against and towards our Haitian brothers and sisters where approximately 40,000 Haitians or so were affected by what occurred when the border patrols came and they treated us really poor. And not to mention that we already are a nation that's been dealing with a lot. We lost our leader through an assassination and after losing our leader, um, in such a way that is just detrimental and it wasn't pretty we got to be honest we then experienced an earthquake that put us in a position mental state that we just feel despaired discouraged and our economy in Haiti is not even the best right now we're going through a great economical crisis and we have been for some time so we're looking for resource we're looking for hope we're looking for refuge so we come to the land of the free and we witnessed what occurred as you're gonna see through a few of the pictures that's been online but we'll share it while I'm speaking um, what we as a Haitian nation has gone through expecting hope from the US a country that we helped build during the time of independence or that we helped with their independence what they did to us so we have a few guests who's going to be with us um, that we're going to discuss this matter with we have none other than Mr. Jethro Decimus who's with us. Jethro Decimus is the chief executive officer and founder of La Famille Foundation, whose mission is to uplift the communities in developing countries out of poverty using agriculture and sustainable education. Jethro is an entrepreneur, recording artist, born and raised in St. Martin, of Haitian parents. He received most of his education in Florida, but he now serves the community and he keeps the nation of Haiti close to his heart. And we also have with us tonight, Miss Daniela Pierre, who is a civil rights leader um, and also a liaison for creating opportunities for affordable housing, workplace and career development matters, and also an activist for women and community efforts. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, all the qualifiers, all of you who are tuning in in our live podcast, episode number one, please welcome Jethro Decimus and Daniela Pierre. I'm just elated because these two are eloquent speakers, but they are also imperative to this situation. And I must ask you, and I'll start with you, Jethro, tell me, because I know you were actually in Texas this past weekend. So you experienced it firsthand. Please share with me, what did you witness? And give me the current state of our Haitian folks, our Haitian family and friends, and what they're currently going through right now in Texas. Thank you again, um, George, for having me. Uh, this past week, I was in Texas to experience what the uh, Haitians were going through. And uh, when I got there, there are a lot of pros, a lot of cons. I want to say the pros, to see the Haitians united wow. from Boston, New York, Miami, Atlanta, wow. people from the West Coast coming in all at once. In Texas, that was big. Wow. It literally just, it literally just showed us that l'union fait la force. Right. Like we, we are here together, a Haitians uh, who just got here, you're not alone. Right. So that's the message we sent, but also the the message of, of unity that we we sent through the whole world. Like, hey, no, these are all people. If no one takes care of them, we will show up. We will come to the table. So that was one big tickle, t- tickle away that I took from Texas. Yes. However, I did notice that uh, when when I when we went to the centers. Uh, the the workers there they were a little bit you know pushing us hey, you know kind of like putting it they were putting it in a, a diplomatic way 
we don't really need your help anymore. You guys are too involved, you know. Let, we, we got we got it from there, you know. We have workers which are not Haitians. They don't look like me. They were from other ethnicities. And I'm like, so you got it, but no one here looks like me. So that felt to me, they're like, hey, you guys are too involved. Wow. Back up. So once I got this message, we went to, once, once, we, once they told us that, we went to a hotel where some migrants were, were staying. You know, their, their, their state of mind, their spirit, it's broken because it's a long journey. Like, and so many stories you heard, you know, of, uh, especially going to the jungle from Panama and Colombia. Right. Like, they've witnessed so much. Like, they're distraught. They are discouraged. And and they've, they have just gone through a lot. So it was both a mixture of, man, yes, we made it, but we've been through a lot. We've been through a lot. And... That was that was that was emotional. Right. That was super emotional, and and um, this this I, I could say this is in, in in a nutshell the state of mind of the Haitian people and, and, at, and in it, Texas. And I appreciate Jethro your 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 feedback, and I appreciate again what you're doing for our people, amongst other things. Uh, I, I must I must say it was really heart wrenching to see how they had whips in their hands and how yeah. these folks were on horses. And these are just pictures. And people have to understand, pictures say a lot of words. But when you're actually in the position and you have to, you know, become empathetic and see and realize that this is me going through this. And this is where we have to understand that this is the reality of what's going on. Daniela, you and I have known each other for a few years. And I've seen you take many of stands, not just for our ethnicity, but for many of, for many cultures. I've witnessed you do so many um, outreaches as an activist. Can you provide some insight on your, your sources and what you um, basically um, felt after seeing these pictures and what, what people have um, provided you resources and information of what's currently going and what you felt as a result of these circumstances and instances? Um, and incidences during that time and period. Thank you so much for the opportunity to be a part of this important and necessary conversation. I want to echo something that my panel partner said, Jethro, as it relates to the unity. Mm. While we are on the um, hallmark, unfortunately, of the first earthquake from Haiti, we are again in a similar type of situation where the people are once again hurting. Right. The people are once again at a devastating point. And first and foremost, my thoughts and prayers go out to our entire Haitian community. But something that was very important that moved me, what Jethro said, was the part about the unity. Right, right. And although I was not able to go over to Texas, I can tell you that I was a part a, of a work group that was put together on social media, right. that was able to galvanize and mobilize over 100 attorneys, wow. and over 100 professionals that work within the immigration industry. And let me tell you, they were able to share out information with those attorneys that were on the ground in Texas. They were able to um, connect with translators. They were able to establish a family list so that those who were connecting with families were able to have a comprehensive place. Wow. So they were able to connect one another from Texas and throughout the nation. That was so very important. That's a story that was untold. So mm -hmm. it's very important that through the times of adversity, through these challenges, that we must highlight those times that bring us together. And I would agree. It was a turning point where we saw folks unite for the greater good of all. Right. And I want to commend everyone that volunteered, you know, even during this pandemic, they thought it not robbery to go and help serve their fellow brothers and sisters. Right. And that email and social media work group is still going on to this very day. Wow. We are still getting information from the families, from those attorneys who are still over in Texas, right. still yeah. connecting back to attorneys throughout this nation who have said they're gonna provide 
pro bono services. Awesome. That's important. Awesome. That is important to have that representation available and where it can be accessed. So we are so grateful to know that for those who journeyed over to Texas and were able to be with the people and also able to connect with those of us who were over here praying, fasting, and just, you know, hoping for better, that we were all united to see that our people were treated fairly and right by America. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and and we we must understand the historic and apex element that's always neglected because America would never not be America if it weren't for the, the Haitian folks. Because um, during the time America was fighting for their independence from Britain, we know that it was the Haitian folks that contributed to the independence of America. And these are the things in history books that we don't see. And it really offended and hurt me um, a tremendous, in a tremendous way to, to see what transpired. But thank God for unity. And, and I believe that trials have a way of bringing us together. They say trials come to make you strong. I believe that it brought us in a position where we were able to realize that there is no I and we, and there's only so much that we can do alone, but it was a gateway for us to realize that we need one another. Um, let me ask you both something, and I want you both to continue to elaborate because this is some great information, and I, I feel like there's some assurance and hope, um, ultimately, and as Daniela mentioned, there's no limit when, when prayer is involved, and we, we must acknowledge that. Um, I know President Biden, um, he apologized, and you know, he admitted his failure. And to his credit, at least he did. Okay. So, um, however, we 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 must um, ask this question, and I want both of you to provide some in, some, some insight. How do you think the administrative should have handled this? I mean, there are a number of ways that they should have handled this, and I believe number one deal with being proactive. This was one of his campaign initiatives, not just for him but under his administration. Absolutely. Whatever you set out that that's your platform, that's what you're running on, within your first 90 days, first 100 days, you need to already be working in those areas, identifying those deficiencies, and work towards making them better. Of course, it's not gonna happen overnight, and I too commend the Biden administration for recognizing where they failed because all on the campaign trail, they talked about immigration reform. Church. Just that one rally, but the entire rally. That the was whole a time. Yes. Because, yes. And, and that's why, Jethro, you could, you could, you, when you, when your turn comes, we can all agree. That's why we voted for the man. Yeah. <laughs> because truth is, we weren't too excited about, we're not building this argument off of Democratic or, or any political party, we're building it off of fairness, as, as Daniela is stating, and I'm going to give it right back to you, Daniela, but truth is, you're in office because that piece, okay, was more appealing than anything else that anybody else said, because we were called peace of whatever nation, allegedly, yep. we could say, yep. and, and amongst other things that were done to show um, enmity, separation throughout the whole 2016 to 2020 campaign. I don't care what anyone says. Proven statistically, we've never been as divided as we were between 2016 to 2020. And it's not that the division didn't exist, but it was amplified. It's like they got a green light. Yeah. So we put you in position to now help us because we helped you. So we scratched yeah. your back at one point in time. Now we're asking yeah. you for help. Because obviously there's something wrong. I just left an earthquake. My leader got assassinated. I need help. I don't have resources. I'm going through so many economical issues. Daniel, please provide some insight because you mentioned something that was very imperative. We put you in because of that. Yeah. yeah. And you, you, you promised to us that you was going to build back better, right? And that also includes immigration reform. Right. So we need you to deliver. We need you to stand true to your promises and deliver for the people who put you in office. Come on. 
yeah. it's critical and important to everyone. Um, so yeah, we're looking for some assurances and for him to deliver on what he said. Right. And if I, if I can add, I think one of the things the administration did that was unfair was the deportation. Ooh. It should have never have taken place. I think the people, as soon as they touch land here in America, they deserve to go through a fair process, you know, of uh, immigration and just going before the judge and let the judge decide right. if they're getting deported or not. And, you know, going through that journey and I can, I can, I can just sense the disappointment, wow. the disappointment, the loss, the hurt of a lot of them because I've heard a lot of stories, a lot of, I've seen a lot of, uh, seeing the news when they arrived back in Haiti, some of them, they're like, like, they're so hurt. They didn't get a fair chance. A, as soon as we touch land, we should have been able to be able to go to a legal process to see a judge and the judge could have called it. But the deport, the deportation, I think that was a huge mistake from the administration. Right. And you know what's crazy, I, I must say, what we're not, we're not advocating that there shouldn't be any borders. I believe everything should have a limitation. But yeah. I, as you both mentioned, there's just a way you handle it. There's a way you approach it. Because I had somebody, and I want you both to, 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 to hear this, and, and please jump in at any moment, who indicated and stated to me that this isn't America's business or responsibility. Well, I differ. America's responsibility is peace. All people. Right. All people. So that's that's the responsibility. That is old. Especially the people they done wrong for over 400 years. That's Listen, <laughs> that's I, a, I, probably I, another conversation. But <laughs> I want to go I, back just a little bit <laughs> what Jetro said. I agree. Those who came, who came over here um, and were under that bridge over in Texas. You know, there was already some type of extension that said that if you were over in America, I believe the date was until, well, at least by July 24th, mm -hmm. you were able to stay. So I don't understand why um, Homeland Security or the Biden administration couldn't have already just extended it. These people were already here. They, they were, were here. already here. Yeah, yeah. In the pandemic, everybody is in a pandemic. They should have just extended that time frame so that the people could have had fair and due process. Absolutely. That was just totally devastating. It, just, my heart bleeds just to know that people, children, the amount of pictures that we were um, provided from those reporters that were on the ground showing us the overrun porta potty, mm. showing us how children were just over there just in that those type of living conditions. People right. waiting for food like this, and this is America. Yeah. The land of the yeah. home for the free and the brave. We have people, humans, humans. That's so hurtful. And to, to answer to your question, George, is it America responsibility? I would ask the question, well, you have America getting Afghans refugees to the United States. They are taking responsibility. So why is America taking responsibility for one group of people, but for another group of people, it's, oh, no, 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 no. That's not America's responsibility. So I'm like, th th there's the, the fairness there that's just, you know, for one group of people, it's fair, but for another group, no, 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 no. You stay, don't come, you know, don't intrude. And that's where I'm, I'm, I'm there's a big question mark. Like, you can offer a group of people from the Middle East help, a help them through the legal process to right. integrate them here. Hold their hand. But, uh, hold it, exactly. But for another group, oh no, that's not our responsibility. So I'm like, so what makes this people group like your responsibility over this people group? So this is where I'm like, hey, we have to stay fair across the board. We have to stay fair across the board. Um, whether it's someone from the Middle East, Africa, Thailand, Haiti, 
everyone deserves a fair try, a fair shot. So. And, and, and that le literally, you you went to the next question that I have because I was literally going to ask, would they even do that to another nationality? And we we you know because um, not we know there should be limitations. We know there should be borders. Um, there should be a process, as mentioned. Yeah. But let, yeah. let's be honest. Would any would would any other nationality who's from an anybody from another nationality who has a skin tone that's maybe perhaps lighter, would they have gotten that treatment mm. when they hit the borders? I've seen them turn people away, but I've never seen even the incident with the Puerto Ricans that got separated. I've never seen them get whooped. Yeah. I've never seen that. It's 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 like no humanity. You know. No, go I, ahead, go I, ahead. You know, sometimes when I look at those pictures, I'm like, it, it, it seems so intentional. It seems so like, yeah, I'm going to show you I can do this. Right. <laughs> like, when, when you look at it, I'm like, like, no, this, this, this cannot be happening. Like, this is not real. And right. here it is, 2021. It's just, it's yeah, just like, a high volume of hate. Yeah, they think yeah, it's wrong it, with it. <laughs> right. What's wrong with the pictures? What's wrong? These are standard procedures for black people. <laughs> pictures. We've been doing this. Haven't y'all read some of the policies that say we can do this? Y'all right. don't change these policies no way. So right. we're going to continue using Title 42. We're going to continue doing deportation. We're going to continue mistreating black folk like that. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like, what, what y'all are upset for now? I don't vote. This ain't nothing new. Right, this ain't nothing new. You should we be used this. to this treatment because yeah. this isn't anything new. This is something we've been doing for centuries. What's new to you all? Why are you acting brand right. new? Right. That's why they was ill prepared for every press conference they had. Right. Talked about hate. They were ill prepared. I'm so sorry. I watched most of them and they were ill prepared because right. they did not know that America was gonna get involved. Right. They didn't know that. They knew that they knew that the, the Haitian people were going to be involved. Yeah, of course. of course. And I and I want to acknowledge publicly all of our Haitian civil rights leaders, those yeah. all around. I acknowledge, I honor you all for stepping out yeah. because this was really a situation that was really hurtful, and it was really honestly one of these situations that it was basically the epitome of of of. The 1900s, early 1900s, yeah. when we were in the cotton fields. Yeah. This was what it was a reenactment of what occurred back in the day. And I'm acknowledging everyone who stood up because truth is, while there were those who stood up publicly and stated, you know what? These people can't suffer. I I, I was so so amazed to see what that that um Texas governor, and that's literally after he spoke, I called this the real Texas massacre. Mm. Because mm. when Governor Abbott stood up and said, those officers, those who are working border patrol, those border patrol agents, I will hire them back. Those who's under investigation, those who were fired and so forth. He said he would hire them back, those who were terminated that handled that situation. Can you believe the mindset in 2021 during a pandemic? You would think after a pandemic, where the pandemic is not discriminatory of your color, your race, your ethnicity, your 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 economical status, you would think this would bring us together. Yeah. Governor Abbott said he will hire those who are terminated and who are undergoing investigations for the way they treated our Haitian people in Texas. You know about, they've been doing this. I'm telling you, the way they saw the outpour and the reaction of not just black people, people were united on this, going back to their yeah. initial point. Mm -hmm. America stood together on this. You know, you still had those outliers who, you know, were saying something different. But from what I saw, people came together to call for a change. So these people who've been practicing all these racist tactics. They're like, what, what's wrong? We've been doing this. What, y'all, we can't do it anymore? What changed? Right. Right. 
and 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 you know it it shows again you know it was done deliberately because you know you have if you have cameras there you have you you know there they it's gonna get caught at least you could you 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 could you could have said you know what hey let me let me just you know watch my what i'm doing you know so it doesn't get exposed or you know but it was just done deliberately like like I, i just could feel like it was intentional and there was no reserve no nothing and i'm like man like like really like still in 2021 like there is like this mentality a i, I still see you as a, a as a beast as an animal or a, a lesser human being right right and like and this is and to me this is this is it's just heartbreaking right. it's it's heartbreaking and and to have a leader um you know a i'll back you up after what you did I, 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 I'll reinstate you, you know, to to have employment, and it, it just shows you how you know there's no fairness, equality, and 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 you know and 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 yeah. So it's 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 sad, and you know what I feel? I I, I just feel like they those who do these things, they ultimately know, no matter what, they still have coverage, as it has been proven. So whenever they treat us a certain way, whenever they abuse us a certain way, they know at the end of the day they will have coverage because their leaders will cover them. Someone will cover them. Somebody will still put food on their table. Somebody will still take care of their household. They will have coverage. They will have protection by any means. In fact, they may even get rewarded as a result yeah. of doing that. And that's you know basically how we felt when we watched the videos when we saw the content and and I'm grateful to God I'm not a big advocate of it but you know what there's always pros and cons and everything I'm grateful to God for social media for putting this out there because this isn't new but this is just getting televised this yeah, is just yeah. getting um notoriety people are able to see it firsthand and we don't have to wait for channel 7 to edit it we don't have to wait for fox news to fix it up pretty it up and make it masquerade in a way where it looks as if it's justified what they're doing but we're able to see it from the root of the issue and we're now able to tackle the issue for front first hand up front and now we have phenomenal organizations like your organization Jethro that's going to the highways and byways and I commend you for that and we appreciate you yeah. and you know we'll provide more information on how people can contribute and get a part um be a part of it and Daniela your organizations and the movements that you are involved in and affiliated with will provide more information on how we can help because at this point the the final thing we want to address what is next for our Haitian people what should we do what is next at this point where do you see and Jethro you were there firsthand Daniela, you're 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 involved with um the hundreds of attorneys that 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 are there and we see what's going on. So the next and final question I want to ask you both, what is the next course of action because we discussed the issue, we tackled the history, we tackled the problem. So now at this point, we need to create a plan of action and discuss it on this platform so we can let the folks know what opportunities you have to get a part and get be a part of this get involved so you're no longer one who's just watching folks do things yeah. but you can get involved cuz we all know i'm going to keep it 100 we all know these phony folk organizations are it okay we know these organizations are embarrassing us and, and some of them yeah, are especially the yeah. they're holding the hate yeah, nationality yeah. and and it's a shame you should be ashamed of yourself because you have the opportunity Okay? And you have resources and instead of using these opportunities and resources to help those in need, you're now creating foundations to support and feed your 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 greed. I'm not talking mm-hmm. about any of these folks don't care to even give them that much attention. But we yeah. want to allow people to understand and see that there are folks who are actually in the forefront forefront, those who are in the trenches getting work done. Um, not only in the name of Haitian or in the name of Haiti, I should say, but in the name of the Lord, letting them know, you know what, God is still working. God is yeah. still able. Trust in God. Don't give up the hope. Don't give up the faith. 
In fact, what we would want to even do is go a step further and say, you know what? Haiti, we're giving you God. We're giving you Jesus. Go inside the church. We're giving you an opportunity to understand that it, it, it is beyond what's happened in the past. Whatever alliance, whatever contract, I'm not even concerned. We want to give our people an opportunity to understand that the favor of God is still on our people. We're not done. Yes. We're not yeah. done. So yeah. I want to hear from you both. Provide some final thoughts and share um, what is next? What is the next course of action for us? Gentlemen, you like you can go first. <laughs> no, I know both of you have a lot inside, but by all means, you know, yeah. what's the next thing for us? You know, I say I say that you know, we are we are the product by product of, you know, migrants mm -hmm. who migrated in the eighties, nineties. Uh if things were if they if our parents had the opportunity in Haiti Right. most likely they wouldn't be here you know so they came here it's because of lack of opportunity and uh they just wanted their children to have you know access to opportunities and uh in the diaspora i think one action we must take we need group of leaders who regularly meet Mm. and think and think and do for Haiti I think we don't have we, we I think we're all scattered and I think we're slowly getting you know finding the leaders one by one but it's coming together and keeping that consistency of meeting gathering and dreaming thinking for Haiti but also do for Haiti so I think that's one that's one step of uh, that's we, could, we could, we could that's take major. yeah yeah, because I, I I don't like our our history tells the Haitian history tells us hey we had you know Toussaint we had this Aline we had those leaders right. and people knew there were the leaders but I I feel like right now in this state we are we are in as Haitians we're like okay who's the leader like ooh. It, but it's like it's 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 when a tragedy hits we're like oh, okay. I know this pastor and he naturally takes the lead and you know but no no one continues after a disaster right. it is done. so i think we need to get together and that's one um two i really believe we have to create ways how we can resource and empower our haitians back home i'm me i'm dreaming the next 50 70 80 years there'll be less migrants taking the routes, coming to America. Mm. I remember Dr. Miles Monroe said, the advancement right. of a nation, it's from its own soil. So uh, I really believe that in the mentality, the mindset of our people, they see outside of Haiti as the promised land, which the promised land can be home. It can be where you're at right now. So. It's, 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 the, it's the narrative of telling Haitians, hey, you can make it happen here. You can, you can make it happen here. You, we, 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 you can have, we can send you the resources, we can empower you. But I believe after so many years and decades of, of just sorrow and pain, I believe our people, they, they, they've lost they don't have inspiration and they 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 do not believe they no longer believe wow that's major and yeah nothing can happen if you if you don't believe nothing can happen and whenever i go to haiti after the earthquake i was there and they they don't believe anymore and this is no miracles can happen wow. with no belief so these are um, steps of action that we, we, we should take. Empower family, uh, job creation, especially in Haiti. Uh, this is something the, the foundation is doing is empower families, empower schools, uh, create jobs. So, um, so people can do, they can do. So these are the actions I would say, you know, to, to do. I, I'm gonna recap again. Here in the diaspora, we have to unite 
leaders get together, dream, think, and do. Let's do, what are we doing? Are, are we gonna fundraise? Um, I don't know if it's million of dollars and we're gonna go and lobby and so we could have, you know, a say so of who's gonna be, you know, in leadership in Haiti. So Because we, we, we have, we, we have such a strong power. We do. This, this, what happened in Texas showed me the diaspora, we are very strong. Wow. When we, we get present. together, yeah, just it, it, just, and they just... know it, and they know it, they know yeah. it. Outside, we... Outsiders, they know it. Right. Because we, we've been in a culture, we've been in an environment where it's organized. We, we our mentality, our mindset is just, you know, has widened and and we've been exposed to opportunity. So they know what we're capable of. Absolutely. We have the resources, we have the intelligence, and we're, we're more powerful than we think we are. And I don't think it should take a disaster, a tragedy for us to react. Absolutely right. So, and secondly, empower. Not only the people, in, not only empower them with, you know, um, resources but the, on a mindset level on a mentality level educate them education education so this is my take as far as action and i appreciate that that's actually phenomenal because we are currently a leader or leaderless gen, um, um nation right now we're a leaderless nation and truth is uh at this point it's inevitable we need a, a leader and there's something you mentioned, um, the, the component or the aspect of consistency. That's imperative. Um, Daniela, please provide your, your, your stance and your feedback on what we should do next. What's next for us to do? I think we definitely have to continue to come together um, as it relates to organizations who are built and designed to do the work, who proclaim to be in this business, we need to one, hold those organizations accountable um, so that they can deliver and do the work. Um, and those civil rights organizations, they have all come together to put forth demands and have actually met with the Biden administration. Um, and they're calling for expansion when it comes with um, temporary protected status. Um, also, they're calling for uh, immediate halt for deportations. Um, they're also calling for uh, taking a stance against the uneven application of Title 42. Um, and I would encourage everyone to definitely go and read Title 42. Um, and they're also looking to provide additional assistance to those who are seeking asylum. Um, and there are many other ways that many of the civil rights groups are coming together uh, to keep Haiti at the forefront of the way they operate and do business. Um, so I will tell those to check out those groups. Many of them have already put together uh, action alerts and petitions mm. um, so they can be able to show the numbers and those who are in support of all of their immediate demands and mandates. So I would definitely say uh, connect with those organizations who have been uh, proven to do the work for people. Um, and I will also say, you know, those that are here um, on the ground, let's continue to pray um, and uplift Haiti, um, yeah. all that it has gone through my God, uh, we we definitely have to keep, you know, Haiti in our hearts, in our thoughts, and our prayers. Uh, we can never go wrong with that. Um, but of course, you want to follow that up with action. So definitely connect those organizations that are doing the work. Um, yeah. Also, I think it's important too that we continue to hold those who we put in office accountable. Uh, yeah. As the Biden administration continues to share updates and new things that they're trying to do, we have to be wherever those updates are coming. Right. Now, you yeah. can be in the press room, but if you are on social media, right, right. and yeah. that tweet come across, and it's not mm -hmm. about advancing the people of Haiti, we got to check it. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's on us. And it's a way you could do it and be respectful, Absolutely. but it's a way you must do it and be intentional. Ah. 
as we see that stuff coming on social media and as we see uh, those who are part of the media, different media outlets, we have to hold them accountable too on how that they're reporting a story and a narrative because it's them that's putting the story out there. Yeah. yeah. We saw a positive story and I know there's some positive stories. We just heard about yeah. you on this call tonight. Mm -hmm. We keep hearing those stories so that we can bring that sense of inspiration back to the yes. Haiti. Right. Yes. So it's, so it's upon us all to, you know, invest in this, you know, whether it's financially, mentally, or just commit to the time of making certain that people do right by one another. Absolutely. Uh, some of the things I would say, I, I definitely am looking at how different media outlets are reporting the story, are reporting the narrative, because that's just as important of right. what we read and see. But we also have a responsibility. Absolutely. Right? As the people who are here uh, in the home of the land and the free, we have a responsibility to hold those accountable who was putting out that bad information, who was painting people in a negative light, and who's not doing anything to advance us forward. But that's on us. So wherever we are, if we see that information that's coming out on social media, it's on us to check it. Or if we don't want to check it, guess what? Report. Right. Yeah. We, we got to do that. And it starts as many ways that we can begin to rethink, reframe, and shape a new narrative of hate. That's on us. We have to all come together and make that happen. Yeah. And at this juncture, I, 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 I'm definitely appreciative again. And I, I definitely believe this is an ongoing conversation as both of you mentioned that needs to take place. It shouldn't just be today, but it has to continuously take place tomorrow, the day after yeah. tomorrow, the day, the day yeah. after tomorrow. Because at this juncture, our nation needs restoration. Our nation needs hope. And it's not a cliche, but it's our reality. We've gone through enough. Yeah. And I'm going to be honest with you. If uh, any other nation, this is why I know Haitian people are called by God. Hey. If any other nation went through a quarter of the things we've gone through, they would not be here today. You're back up. No, you're back up. Let me just show you the you're back up. Listen, they you're wouldn't be able to survive. <laughs> they wouldn't be. Listen, I believe in my faith that we are a nation that is really elected and selected by God. And God has his hands on us, but we have to acknowledge him and we have to get to the place, as Jethro mentioned, that we have leaders who are loyal, not to just the vocation, but loyal to the people. Yeah. We need people who are, we need leaders who are loyal to the people. We need people who have a heart for the people, okay? Yeah. Not, not, not looking for any type of, of, of monetary gain. Not looking for anything else or any publicity or, 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 or looking for a platform to get notoriety or get known. Mm. We need people who have a heart for people. And I'm gonna allow both of you because we, we basically are at, at the point at the end of this progress of this of this podcast. But we must understand progressively. We could keep going because all of us have yeah. a lot to offer and a lot in us. And, um, you know, we want to uh, let it out. But Jethro, if you can, as as an entrepreneur and amongst other things that you are that we mentioned earlier, um, please provide some more insight, um, because I know you're the chief executive officer and and founder for um, La Familia La Familia. Foundation. Please provide yeah. some insight on that foundation and how we can get in touch with you and how we can get a part, become a part of, of the progress. Yeah, so definitely here in, uh, in the States, we're still in touch with uh, the local pastors who were um, on the ground in Houston, Texas. So continuously, we're just in touch with them. Hey, do you, we ask them, hey, do you need, guys need anything? Any, you know, any help? How can we serve? So right now they haven't, you know, told us anything yet. But uh, if you want to get in touch with us, uh, the foundation, it's at info at lafamilyfoundation.org. Again, it's info at lafamilyfoundation.org. So that's stateside. Uh, in Haiti, uh, we're currently working in the uh, rehabilitation process in the south that got hit by uh, 
the earthquake. So right now there's a lot of uh, uh, small business uh, farmers, they have been hit really hard. So right now we're giving them grants so they could, you know, get back on their feet. And we are, we are actually fundraising to install water, uh, water structure and water irrigation that would help them uh, double and triple their produce. Um, because if they have um, more produce, they're able to sell. And if they can sell, they could provide for their family. So this is the way right now we are uh, um, intentionally resourcing the people on the ground in Haiti, uh, especially the farmers. We're looking to, to uh, influence and help the national product of the nation so they could produce. So this is how right now we're, we're strategic and how we, we're moving and we're doing so using small business owners because I believe small business owners, they are the engine of a, of the, of a nation. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jeffro. And people, yeah. all, all of my folks who's watching um, this podcast, um, just remember that you can become a part of the, of, of, of the progress. You can become a part of the situation. But if you decide to fall back and not do a thing, you're a part of the problem. And you must realize at this point, we're, we're done talking. We can't keep talking. And Jethro, you'll definitely hear from the qualified team. We'll get involved and we'll make sure that we contribute. Um, thank you. Thank you. Definitely. Thank you. Without question, we'll be a part of this. It's not something that we want to do one time. We want to make sure to the best of our capability, we're a part of the progress because we don't want to just be idle at this point because there is a mission and there's a people who need us. Our people, our cousins, our family, our uncles, our aunts, they need us. Daniela, yeah. please, as our civil rights representative, our civil rights leader, Please provide yes. information um, <laughs> how we can get in touch with you and so forth. And we would love to um, get your information moving forward because we don't want this opportunity between the both of you um, to end. We want to keep it going. Yeah. So again, I want to thank you for this opportunity uh, to be a part of this dialogue. Um, where can you find me? Wherever people are. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Wherever people are, that's where I am especially those who have been uh, left out, those who have been, you know, considered the least lost and left out, you will find me with those people because I'm one of those people. So um, I'm on social media. Um, if you're looking to connect with a civil rights organization, the, the one that's the boldest and the baddest, better become a member of the NAACP. Yes, ma'am. Yes. everyone. <laughs> to join the NAACP. Uh, but if you're within the Miami-Dade area, come on and join that Miami-Dade branch. Come on now. Let's win, right? And we can all win. When we fight, we win. So uh, I'm on social media. I'm on uh, Twitter, uh, Instagram, and Facebook. But What's your name? Yeah, oh, my name is my name, Daniela Four, the number four, change. Daniela Four, change. Um, but you, you're going to find me where the people um, who need the help the most, that's where I am. Um, you'll, you'll probably see me in some commission meetings advocating for uh, affordable housing. Um, you'll probably hear me, you know, speaking to some labor organizations trying to advocate for uh, fair treatment in the workplace. Absolutely. Uh, probably hear me connecting with um, women and children, right, to help them during this time that everyone has gone through, but particularly our mothers right. um, have really faced a hard time um, during this pandemic. Um, so again, wherever people are, uh, particularly those who have been least lost and left out, that's where you'll find me. Absolutely. And again, I, 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 I can't stress enough how elated I am. And I appreciate both you, Jethro and Daniela, for coming on to this qualified podcast, the qualified TV, as I always say. And it's just a privilege to have you both. And this is just the beginning. This won't be the last. We definitely look forward to having you both here in the future. But just yeah. want to remind you all that we appreciate you. We appreciate all that you've done, all that you've contributed, all those who purchased um, our books. Just want to let you know anything that comes our way, we're going to make sure that our people eat from it. 
Um, at this juncture, yeah. we just want to make sure that our people are involved in our progress as well, because we're not going yeah. to just live this life just to make sure that our immediate families who's close here are secured, but we need to start looking out for each other. And yeah. just want to let you all know here, we appreciate you all for, for tuning in. We thank you all for tuning in live to Qualified Podcast. And just remember, no matter what you've done, no matter where you are, even my Haitian brothers and sisters, those who's listening under the sound of my voice, I just want to remind you all that you all are still qualified to win. May God richly and immensely bless you. Look forward to seeing you soon. Peace. Good day to all my family and friends. Dr. G here. Listen, I can't thank you enough for all of the support, all of the kind words, all of the encouragement you've given us. You all keep me motivated. You all keep us going. Don't forget to visit drgeorgefabray.com. Again, drgeorgefabray.com. You can purchase our merchandise. You can purchase our books. You could even book me for any of your, your, your upcoming events. If you want a, a speaker for any speaking engagement, if you need a host for any of your bar mitzvahs, weddings, any gala, I am there at your disposal for all of your needs. More importantly, we thank you. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, share our YouTube channel, Qualify Podcast. We thank you and we appreciate you for all that you've done and we can't say it enough. No matter where you are, no matter what you've been through, this is not a cliche, but we're just reminding you that you are still qualified to win.